Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Chris Elliott Show. We talked to the coach of the Bethel Wildcats coming up in just a matter of moments, and we'll get his uh, thoughts about this past week's 22 to nothing loss to Pikeville, and we'll preview with Coach Elliott the upcoming game against Kentucky Christian. It'll be kickoff at 12:30. There will be no link on our side, but there is a link on our website where you can watch the game and hear the audio and uh, watch the video from the Kentucky Christian uh, folks up there, and they'll do a great job. So be sure and go to BethelAthletics.com, go to the football site, and you'll see that there uh, where you can watch the game. We'll not be making the trip with the Cats. We'll be back with them in a couple weeks when they return here with Wildcat Vision. Speaking of Wildcat Vision, over a 1,000 people watched the game the other day. Many of you probably out there that watch this show, so we certainly appreciate that. I'm joined by Zach O'Kelly, our assistant SID at Bethel, and of course uh, does the ball games with me as well. Zach, welcome back aboard and a tough loss for the Cats, 22 to nothing, but a ball game that was really close and really competitive that could have gone either way, all the way through about midway of the fourth quarter. You're right there uh, all the way through up to the middle of the fourth quarter Bethel was definitely in the game uh, and just one or two good uh, breaks that went the, other, went the opposite way, then the momentum could have changed and been a lot closer. A lot of kids played well, especially on the defensive side of the ball that kept us in the ball game. They did. Jerry Bradford was a definite standout. Vic played well. Uh, Matt and Gill, Joshua Burns led us in tackles with 11 total. I was about to say Burns did as yeah. well. They, uh, the defense really played well. They really did. I thought the D-line was there, Johnny on the spot. We mentioned Jerry Bradford and some others. Uh, and, of course, Vic Chesinski, the, the entire gang. I think his parents were actually watching the game down in Merritt Island, Florida. But uh, a lot of kids played well, so congratulations to the defense. 9 nothing at the break. We go into the fourth quarter, and it's still a 15 nothing game. They they score a couple of uh, scores there late in the game, make it 22 to nothing. But uh, offense really had a tough time, especially the first half, minus nine yards at halftime. But came out and put some good drives together in the third quarter. And I said during our Wildcat Vision broadcast, I said it's almost like baseball when you leave people on base and you don't get them in, it comes back to haunt you, and it's sort of what happened to you to us. We had some missed opportunities. We had the ball two or three times down inside their 30, just couldn't finish the deal. You're out there, and just any time that you get inside the mid from the 30, 35 in, you know, where you're in striking distance of either scoring a field goal or you know just one long pass play away or one long breakaway run away, sure. it's it's just like leaving a runner on third base, like you yeah. said. It's it's just a backbreaker. Absolutely. Uh, we look at the uh, Cats going to Kentucky Christian, be the sixth time these two programs have met. They first met back in 2009. And Kentucky Christian leads the series three to two by the virtue of they came in here last year, put thirty on us here at our place, and beat us, and beat us pretty soundly. So it's payback time. I agree. Uh, you know, Kentucky Christian had a great season last year. Uh, they they look very dominant here. Uh, the Wildcats, I believe, they're going to play a little spirited ball this week. Uh, I saw them yesterday a little bit of practice. Uh, with a little bit of practice, they they looked in high spirits, even coming off a tough loss to Pike. Yeah, I think Bethel's going to win the ball game. We'll get uh, Zach's picks on that in just a couple of minutes. A new regime at Kentucky Christian. One of the problems at Kentucky Christian has been their stability. They've had a few coaches up there through the ranks and uh, just sort of some turnover. Uh, they do not have an SID at the school, but uh, we appreciate uh, uh, Bruce Dixon, the AD there, that's helped us out a lot. And Coach Barrows has been helpful with us as well, preparing our game notes. You can see the game notes. It's uh, basically on our football site on BethelAthletics.com. Just click on football there on the left and you'll see a complete preview of the game. It goes over stats. It goes over all the things that you'll need to know about the Cats. And some interesting things. So one of my favorite segments is Did You Know? So be sure and check that out. Well, Zach, I guess without further ado, we'll get your thoughts about the Kentucky Christian. Look at that smile on his face, folks. Uh, two, so far, th two weeks of Wildcat Visions, Chris Elliott Show. Three and, weeks. Uh, three weeks, excuse me. Where's your record right now? 14 and 3. 14 and 3. What three games have you missed? Uh, missed the Campbellsville, Cumberland's Kentucky you missed game Campbellsville the first twice, week. Two rows in a, two weeks missed in a row. the Campbellsville Weber International game week two. And, and you missed our game last our week? Our game, yeah, this yeah, past yeah. week. Yeah. yeah, we both uh, thought the Cats would win, and hopefully they'll turn things around 1 and 2 on the season against an 0 and 3 Kentucky Christian team. Let's start by telling you, first of all, that the uh, Mid South Conference has uh, three teams ranked in the NAI Coaches Top 25 poll. Lindsey Wilson, the best ranking in the school's history. I guarantee you, Chris Wells is dancing in the street, calling me from time to time. They're number two in the country. Faulkner, number four, and Reinhardt, who was just uh, out of the poll when the season started, jumped up to 24, and now they're at number 19. Three tough teams and three that we have to face down the road. And the, it's like you said, they're they're all in our – with the realignment, Lindsey Wilson being over in the West, now they're all in our division. Yeah. Let's start with some non-ranked teams playing, though. Bluefield at Camelsville. Bluefield, Campbellsville. Uh, Bluefield's got a dual-threat offense. They like to run the ball, they like to pass the ball, and they do it very well at times. Uh, Bluefield started off with a kind of a slow start, uh, but the Faulkner game with Bluefield impressed me. They, they 
they went into a hostile environment and uh, really, you know, with Faulkner being a pretty potent offense, they still were pretty close in the game. So, mm -hmm. um, I like Campbellsville in that game. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, the other non-ranked uh, matchup is Union from Barberville, Kentucky. They'll travel a little west to take on the Cumberlands, the Patriots over in Williamsburg. If the bird could fly from Barberville to Williamsburg, it'd just take him a few minutes. But how you drive it, it takes a little while. Not that bad, but uh, two lanes are rough. Uh, but uh, you can go up to London and go around that way, or you just go across the, the country. But anyway, no one cares. Uh, Union Cumberland, a uh, nice article earlier this week on Adam Craig, the former Jackson Northside uh, quarterback, who's the quarterback of Cumberlands. They've been a strange program lately. Really not very good last year. The year before, made the national championship game. How do you see them right now? This game is going to be a shootout. This is going to be. This will probably be the, to me, the game of the week. As far mm -hmm. as it's going to be a close game. Um, but Cumberland's just. I, I think Cumberland's going to be the favorite there. Okay. Now I'm going to go with the Cumberlands as well because they're at home at Union Bunch. So them Bulldogs out of uh, Barberville. They can more than what a pretty little town, but boy, they can be they can be tenacious as well. Now let's get into some of the other matchups. Uh, we'll save Lindsey. Lindsey Wilson has the open date, so you know they're going to be okay. Uh, Georgetown at number four Faulkner. Can you believe? I know what he's going to predict, and then I'm going to probably <laughs> agree with him. Is it possible that Georgetown can open up 0 and four? Starting the season, there's no way in the world I would have thought George, Georgetown would even have the chance of starting out that one four. Not unless, not unless I went three, especially with playing two home games mm -hmm. back to back. Uh, but they've had a tough schedule for the first four games. Uh, Cumberland surprised them the first week. Cumberland, mm -hmm. Tennessee, uh, and then they've went through the murderers row of the Western yeah. Division sure. here and uh, playing Ryan Hart and. The, Lindsey Wilson, now they're playing Faulkner. And mm -hmm. all three of these are ranked schools. So. Now, you're not as big on Faulkner as I am. I still think Faulkner, they're number four. I still think they're the team to beat in the West. You don't you don't agree with me so much, though, do you? I, I, I don't think their defense may be as good as the Faulkners we've seen in the mm -hmm. past. They're, but offense is still pretty pretty, pretty solid. Who do you like in this game, though? I like Faulkner. You like Faulkner. I'm going to go with Faulkner as well. Although, don't be shocked if Georgetown, Bill Cronin's team goes down there and wins down in Montgomery. Uh, Georgetown opening up 0-4 is like the Yankees opening up 0-20. I'm telling you, it's just uh, it's sort of profound and sort of shocking, but uh, they're still a good program, no doubt. Uh, meanwhile, the other matchup today, uh, or I should say Saturday, Pikeville, a team that just beat us, came in here to Wildcat Stadium right below us here, and we work in the Holland Room here. But uh, Pikeville at number 20, or number 19, I should say, Reinhardt. Well, Reinhardt, uh, very high-octane offense. They've uh they're kind of, well, to use a uh, metaphor from the SEC, they're kind of the old Miss right now of the mm -hmm. Mid-South. They're putting up points on everybody, and it's, somebody's going to have to stop them eventually. But Pikeville played well here. Uh, Pikeville's front lines are going to have their work cut out for them. Uh, the defensive line is going to have it worked out for, or work cut out for them, but Reinhardt's going to go 4-0 after this week. I think they will, too, and we'll see them the last regular season game of the year over at their place um, over in Georgia. But uh, that uh, bottom line is I think Pikeville has a chance to go in there and win, though. Don't be shocked and surprised if that D-line of Pikeville doesn't play well and give Reinhardt all they want. I think Reinhardt, in the end, though, will have too much. Well, we have two games left. By the way, I forgot to mention our lovely producer and director today is one Bridget Neisler from our SID staff. And Bridget does a great job. The only problem is when we hit, tell her to hit record, she can barely reach it up there on the camera. But she's doing a great job and looking just as lovely as ever. Two games left. We'll start with the, before we get to our game, up at Kentucky Christian, uh, Cumberland, Tennessee at Valdosta State. Uh, Valdosta State is a GS, GSE Go South Conference sure. Division II powerhouse. Always have been. Uh, National titles. Been very dominant. Uh, Back when UNA had some great teams there, they there was one game that was five to two was the final score, and mm -hmm. that was a you know a defensive struggle. Uh, I think Cumberland may be a little under overmatched there. The only thing that could possibly make this any closer would be I'd also say looking forward to playing UNA next week and at home as well. So. But I've got to pick Valdosta State there. Yeah, yeah, I think you have to go with Valdosta State as well down uh, down their place. That's a tough place to play. And, of course, they've had tremendous tradition. Cumberland's a pretty good football team. They've sort of been up and down. Uh, went to Georgetown, surprised them a little bit, and then got beat. But uh, we'll see how the Bulldogs do against Valdosta State. And that leads us to our last game and the big game in our hearts and minds, the Cats against the Knights in Grayson, Kentucky, Kentucky Christian. Well, Kentucky Christian starting out 0-3. Uh, Looking at their stats, they've given up a lot of yards on the ground, uh, given up a lot of yards passing as well. But 
they played some pretty tough teams. And, uh, you know, Bethel coming off a loss to Pikeville. The defense played great. Uh, the defense has played great sure. uh, all three games. The defensive front for Bethel has been outstanding for all three games, in my opinion. Uh, you know, Bradford, uh, even Dominic Glenn's been playing well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. A lot of the guys on Terrence Thomas as well played very well. Joshua Burns led us in tackles. Vic had another, Vic Sosinski had another game. His parents are watching down in Merritt Island, Florida. But you look at some of the other folks too. I know that uh, um, the line, uh, the D line, really played well against. Uh, you know, I thought even the Martin game, it was big plays in that game that hurt us. But uh, you know, we had some solid efforts there too. Yeah, we did. Uh, but looking at this weekend, you know, I, I think Bell's going to bounce back with a win. 38-13 is what I have. Well, pretty close. I said 37-21, the Cats to win it. So you're 14-3. 14 and, three, 14 and, and three. We'll wait and see how he does, folks, uh, next week when we look at all the picks. Uh, we still haven't come up with a big name for it. Zach's picks is all we've come up with thus far. That's all we got. Uh, we've, got our, we've got our creative coordinator working on that right yeah, now. Yeah, we have so. our staff working on that as well. So that's going to wrap it up for this segment. When we come back, the coach himself, it's the Chris Elliott Show, he'll join us. He'll look back at what happened against the Pikeville Bears, and he'll also look at what's going to happen against the Kentucky Christian uh, Knights, the Kentucky Christian University Knights, I should say, in Grayson, Kentucky. Kick off at 12.30. Go to our website. You'll see the link that you can watch the Kentucky Christian uh, uh, broadcast as well. So Coach Elliott will be with us right after this. Stay with us. This is the Chris Elliott Show on Wildcat Vision. Welcome back, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that opening segment with our co-host, Zach O'Kelly. This guy's really good with his picks. We'll see how he did this week uh, with his picks here just a few minutes ago. We're joined by Coach Chris Elliott. After all, this is the Chris Elliott Show. And, Coach, welcome back to the Airwaves of Wildcat Vision. I know a tough game. Uh, I thought we played pretty well defensively. Uh, let's review before we talk about Kentucky Christian on the road this week. Let's review the Pikeville game. Right there in the ball game at the end of the half, right there at the end of the third quarter, uh, certainly some missed opportunities hurt us. Well, definitely. I mean, you know, you can kind of look at two different halves. I mean, at least for our offensive, from an offensive perspective, I don't even think we ran 20 plays in the first half and struggled to get a first down. Uh, and the game was only nine nothing at the half. I mean, so you, you know, walking off the field at halftime, and he still felt pretty good about things because right. it was, you know, barely a two-score game. And, I mean, you know, our defense, you know, was on the field, I think, 40, almost 50 plays in the first half, which isn't good. Uh, but it was still just a 9 nothing game. Um, so those guys did a really good job. I mean, statistically, they may have put up some numbers, but the number that matters really is the scoreboard, and they weren't scoring. So that was, you know, that put us in a position at least to have a chance. And, I mean, you, know, you look at the second half offensively, we had – four out of our first six drives we were you know inside the 30 or the 25 and had chances and you know we came away with a missed field goal two turnover on downs and a, you know and an interception so you know and I mean heck it ended up what 22 to nothing so I mean that's you know a three score game so I sure. mean we were right there in the second half and had chances and just you know just didn't punch the you know punch it in but uh you know, and defensively, of course, you know, they got to get some rest in the second half because right. we actually had, you know, those four drives where we had chances. I mean, they were all double-digit play drives and, of course, gave those guys a chance to get some much-needed rest. But, uh, you know, it was one of those that, you know, I mean, give credit to Pikeville. I mean, you know, like I said, they were going to be a tough opponent coming in, and they did what they needed to do to win. But, uh, you know, we feel like we really missed an opportunity, sure. um, you know. But... You know, it's over and done with, and, you know, you take what you got, you know, take what you can from it and then move on. I know you've looked at the film, as you always do. You and your great staff, and you've dissected things. What have you accentuated to the offense about being able to finish some of those drives? I mean, just, you know, just taking advantage of the opportunities and finishing plays. I mean, you know, we're not three or four mistakes away from having that play. Right. Um, you know, it's a read here or a step there. Or, you know, it's really down to that, that one or two, and a lot of times it's just one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one mistake, but, I mean, that's all it takes. Sure. Um, and, of course, you know, when you have 11 people on the field, they all have to be doing the right thing at the same time, right. you know, to be successful. So, you know, we've just been, you know, just polishing the things that we're doing. I mean, you know, we're not going to change 
you know, yep. philosophically or, you know, the stuff that we're doing. We just have to do it better. Situating the uh, defensive effort, too, I really thought, and I think everyone that was here thought they really played well. And those folks that watched it on Lockhead Vision, and by the way, about a 1,000 people tuned in oh, uh, the other day watching the game, and we hope that uh, you'll continue to do that with our home games uh, and, and, for that matter, with our links to the uh, visiting uh, links as well on the road. But, Coach, you look at uh, the defense. Uh, I mean, I thought top to bottom from the D-line right back to the secondary. You take away a couple of big plays that they made, uh, that set them up for scoring opportunities, and that's a scoreless game at halftime, and maybe even scoreless, or we maybe even ahead at the end of the third quarter. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, they had a couple big plays late, you know, right. to get the, the the last two scores, and you know, we just had a missed assignment on the you know the touchdown in the first half where they ran the option. Everybody, you know, we basically just let the quarterback go, yeah. um, which you know would be not a good idea yeah. whenever he's running the ball. But uh, you know, I mean. Can't, I mean, you can look at numbers and say, you know, they gained however many yards, but, you know, if you only give up 22 points, not that we want to give up 22 points, but if you're only giving up 22 points in a game, you feel like you should have a pretty good shot at winning it. Yeah, I love the atmosphere. Before we talk about Kentucky Christian on the road, I love the atmosphere. I thought we had a big crowd. There's a lot of festive things going on. I know you guys uh, really don't pay attention to a lot of that, but I do know that you know there was a big crowd here and mm -hmm. people really turned out to support you. Well, yeah, I mean, and that's, you know, that's always the hope is that we're going to have a lot of people out. And I know, you know, there were some things, you know, set up to try to get, you know, more students out of right. the game, you know, with the tailgating and things sure. like that, you know, up behind the uh, student center. So, you know, it seemed like there were people out early. You know, of course, you know, we get down here, you know, around 12 o'clock or before. So, you know, most people get here after that since it's one thirty game. But, you know, it felt like it was, you know, it felt like it was a good atmosphere. I just, you know, wish we would have put a, you know, better product on the field to, you know, to make people leave happy. Yeah, absolutely. Odd start to this season. Two on the road, one home, now two back on the road. Sort of an odd, odd way to begin the season, isn't it? Yeah, just uh, you know, of course now we're in the conference play, right. so you know that that's you know was not set by us. You know, basically we just take what we get and then you know run with it. But uh, you know, just one of those years where you know things are just you know we have two away, then two home, then another two away. So you know, yeah. just I don't know, it's just how it worked out, I guess. It was a conference game, but it wasn't a division game for those folks. Mm -hmm. I think most of our fans that follow us from week to week, year to year, know uh, what that means. But for for those that maybe don't. Uh, for the novice out there just tuning into the Chris Elliott Show, talk about what a difference that is because we're still right there in the thick of things in our division. Yeah, I mean, as far as that goes, I mean, we don't we call those money games. I mean, those money games aren't until the last five. Right. Um, you know, the next couple are games against the East Division. So, you know, I guess you call those crossover games, you know, Mid-South crossover games. And then the five at the end of the year are the ones that, you know, count towards winning the division championship. So um, so these next couple will be crossovers, and then sure. we'll get into that towards the end of the season. And speaking of the next game, we'll talk about the Kentucky Christian Knights. It will be the sixth meeting between the Kentucky Christian University Knights up in Grayson, Kentucky. It's about an hour, hour and a half on the other side of God's country there in Lexington, but over on the, on the going toward the east there. But uh, it is a big ball game because it's the next one. It'll be the sixth meeting between the two schools, and we still don't have a little payback. We'll talk about that as they came to our place and beat us last year, but Bethel still leads the series three games to two. We'll talk about the Knights and Coach Barrow's ball club when we come back on Wildcat Vision. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Chris Elliott Show, everybody. I'm Dave McCulley. Zach O'Kelly, our co-host with us earlier, and Coach Chris Elliott joins us again in this segment talking about the Kentucky Christian Ball game. Grayson, of course, the team departing Friday and making their way up to uh, the eastern portion of the Commonwealth. And Coach Kentucky Christian, their numbers do not reflect uh, greatness or anything, but obviously you sort of throw the numbers out. Things get skewed a little bit with non-conference games and those kind of things. Uh, but uh, this is a dangerous ball club that came into our place last year and beat us here and sort of a tough place to play. They a new press box, new facility, but uh, still it's a road game. It's always challenging, isn't it? It is, but, you know, we, you know, the last few games we played on the road, we've been fairly Absolutely, successful. Yeah, so, well. um, you know, so it's not, you know, it's not a bad thing. You yeah. know, I guess it's just, you know, obviously you'd like to play at home, but, you know, you don't get to play them all at yeah. home, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, we're, we're looking forward to having a chance of getting back on the field and, you know, and, and play. And, 
you know, Kentucky Christian is, you know, it's not going to be an easy opponent. You know, you don't put a whole lot of stock in looking at sure. scores and, and, and all those kind of things from previous games because, you know, just like us, I mean, we, we feel like, you know, we're a lot better than what we've shown so far. So I'm sure they're thinking the same thing, or they should be. Um, but, you know, it's a team that, you know, we're fairly familiar with. We've played, you know, the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. So personnel-wise, you know, we feel like, you know, we, we know them pretty well. And they do have a new coaching staff. I think they only have – two coaches back from last year so i mean you know the systems are a little bit yeah. different but as far as the people that are playing you know the guys returning we at least you know have seen them on the field the last year or two yeah coach steve barrows is a new coach and as coach elliott said primarily a new coaching staff but sometimes it takes two or three games to gel into that new system those kind of things that's what makes them so dangerous as well but uh, these two uh, programs first met back in 2009 as we said last year they beat us here at wildcat stadium let's talk about coach uh, barrows's knights ball club what do they do offensively well i mean they like to spread it out a little bit you know their quarterback you know they run the quarterback a good bit the starter uh, is a guy that we've played against, so mm-hmm. we're pretty familiar with. But uh, you know, they'll throw it some. I mean, you know, looking at their stats from the first few games, I think they're skewed a little bit. You know, because sure. some of the score, you know, the spreads in the score, they may have thrown more than what they wanted to. But you know, their their quarterbacks are up at the top of the you know their rushing stat list. So I mean, they're going to run them a little bit, right. which you know always poses. You know, it's an extra person you have to defend. Sure. Um, you know, which you know makes it a little bit more difficult. But you know, we've been playing the run fairly well so you know and and you know we've seen some of that already so you know it's not too big of a deal but you know we just have to be ready to ready to defend what they do talk about them on defense uh defensively they they, they run a 3-3 stack defense um which we saw that a little bit against uh, a little bit against martin so it won't be the first time you know it's not the first time we've had to practice against it and, and that kind of thing and um you know so it's nothing out of the ordinary you know just you know they they're going to put a lot of people, you know, in the box, try to take away the run, and you know we'll have to be able to, you know, try to throw them out of it a little bit, or you know, look at what they do, and you know, determine whether or not we have the numbers to run, or if we have to throw it. Tell the fans uh, too, and I think some people we've covered this in years past on the radio side, but cover this a little bit. Uh, games over Saturday. Uh, you're, you you have a few down hours, but you go right back to work. You look at the films, then you have to install a new system, or you have to adapt and adjust to what the opposing. Talk about how you and your coaching staff approaches that on Sunday, and then parlaying it out to the kids on Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, well, you know, Sunday is kind of our wrap up day from the day prior. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we come in as a staff and grade. You know, the offense, defense, special teams film. You know, the guys work out, you know, they do a you know, weight room workout. When we get them in the pool, we started using the pool this year. Um, and then we have meetings. We have special teams meeting, you know, as a team to review that. And then we meet offensively and defensively and then, you know, start working on the next week. Um, Monday is an off day for the, for the kids. Um, but, you know, for us, that's, you know, the big game sure. planning day. Yeah. You know, you start Sunday, but then, you know, Monday is kind of all day mm-hmm. uh, preparing. Cause Put then the we, package together. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, then we practice Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you know, have meetings with the team and then, you know, practice as well. So, you know, once you get into where you're playing every week, you really don't have a lot of time. I mean, you know, you play Saturday, you know, you wrap up, you know, Saturday on Sunday, yeah. and then, you know, Monday's off, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you practice, and then, Friday's either travel or, you know, light review day, and then you play again on Saturday. Sure. So, I mean, that's how a typical week goes. Yeah, and uh, just to give you folks out there a little background on what Coach Elliott and his staff do, good staff, and uh, we'll see how things go at Kentucky Christian this week. Coach, let's talk about uh, the special teams a little bit. Uh, obviously, we say every week it's about 30% of the game, but certainly in a game like this on the road, they're even magnified, aren't they? Oh, definitely. I mean, you know, when we have – you know, when we have an opportunity to make a difference, you know, on, on those plays, we need to take advantage of them. And, uh, you know, I mean, we feel like you know, there's some possibilities to have some big plays this week. Traveling on the road a lot of times for football teams, and I think this is my 24th year, um, some teams, some years, gel together and bond together really well on the road. Sometimes maybe you don't see the chemistry uh, develop as much. Uh, how about this team? Uh, you've had two road trips already. This will be your third. Do you like what you're seeing with your kids on the road? Sometimes sometimes the challenge gets them up even more, doesn't it? Well, you know, it's when you go out on the road, you, you, know, it's, them, the world. you know, it's basically just, you know, who we put on the bus. I mean, we do yeah. have, you know, we always have a good following in terms of our yeah. crowd, but you know, there's a lot less distractions, you know, you're at a hotel and, you know, we can have, you know, we have dinner together and meetings and all those kind of things. So, um, you know, it's, it's, 
it's a good time to kind of build that, you know, build yeah. that chemistry and make that bond stronger. But you know, our guys, our guys always do a pretty good job of handling, you know, the road trips. I always love road trips. Uh, the bo bottom line is, even as an announcer and as this I do through the years, all those years at Lambeth and now here at Bethel, and it would not, it wouldn't be a, a, a telltale book. It wouldn't be a book that would be controversial. It wouldn't be anything that would get Coach Elliott or the previous coaches I were with fired. But I would love to write a book sometimes about some of the things I've seen and heard on the road. It would be entertaining. Let me say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't, you know, you got to be ready for anything. Oh, yeah. you know, there's I mean, fires on buses, uh, wheels, I mean, all sorts of crazy things. And then um, get to hotels and wait, wait, we don't have you registered. I mean, those kind of things. It's, it's sort of a challenge. But uh, it's fun, too, though, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's you know, it. yeah. it's all part of the. You know, part, I mean, don't get me wrong, we like to play at home, sure, but, you know, yeah. getting out on the road and, you know, sometimes if we're traveling somewhere where there's something, you know, interesting to see, we'll make it a point yes. to go do that yes. kind of thing. I mean, yeah. you know, way back, I guess it's 10 years ago now, we went and played a game outside of Pittsburgh and, you know, we took the team up and, of course, you know, most of the kids being from this part of the mm -hmm. country, they'd, you know, had not ever been to the Pro Football Hall of Fame and, and been probably there, yeah. would not ever go yeah. if it wasn't for something yeah. like that. So, you know, we try to do things like that, too. Yeah. Um, you know, if the opportunity presents itself. Being a big baseball fan, uh, excuse me, interrupting, being a baseball fan, I was out in Iowa a few years ago and went to the Field of Dreams, and I would have never done that unless we had been out uh, playing football there. Let's break it down. What are the keys for a cat win Saturday at Kentucky Christian? Well, bottom line is we need to just go out and have some fun and play Bethel football. Yeah. Um, you know, then you can break it down offensively to a lot of the things we talk about all the time. I mean, have to take care of the football. You know, we turned it over way too many times, and you know, if the other team has it more than you do, you're taking, you know, away opportunities for us to score and be successful. Um, you know, and, and just do the things that we do and just do them better. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't think we're far from getting what we want or getting what we think, you know, we're capable of doing. So, you know, it's pretty simple, you know, from an offensive standpoint. And then, you know, defensively just recognizing, you know, what they're lining up in and what, you know, what their tendencies are and, you know, just playing our brand of football and just doing our thing. And, Chris, I look at this team, and I, I've seen them practice standing here on the foyer sometimes and watch you practice without bothering you or anything and then seeing a couple of games. But it, it's, it's one of those situations I feel like this team – has a chance to really still be a really good football team. It's just a matter of confidence finishing. and You finish a couple of drives, and, boy, it just generates more drives, doesn't it? Well, I mean, and, that, and that's true, and it's not that long ago that we were doing that. Yeah, sure. You, you know, I mean, it was just a couple of weeks ago, yeah. you know, we – you know, we played a first half where I think we finished all but maybe one, mm -hmm. uh, you know, one drive. So, I mean, we're more than capable of doing it. We just have to, you know, sure. do the right thing so that we make sure we do it. Absolutely. And I want to, uh, and it was something in our game notes this past week, uh, we talked about Josh Wilson. I want to talk about uh, the NFF National Scholar Athlete Award. This kid, from the time he hit campus to right now, he's been a scholar athlete. Talk about him a little bit. That's a great honor. He's nominated again. Uh, to be one of the top academic student athletes in the entire country. Well, I mean, like you said, he's he's done that since he's been here. I mean, since he stepped on campus, he's been, you know, on, on his GPA is pushing a 4.0, and yeah. you know, there's a lot of semesters where he does get 4.0s, and I mean, you know, so he's doing the right things off the field, um, and certainly setting himself up, you know, to graduate, you know, and, and and have a great career there. And then, of course, you know, from a playing standpoint, I mean, he's a guy that always does, you know, what we ask him to do. And of course, his job is one of those ones that, you know, the only time, the only, and this is unfortunate, but the only time people really notice, you know, the long snapper is if they if make a, a mistake. Yeah. Um, so people just take for granted the job that they do, and uh, and he does a great job at it. And he's done it for four years, and you know. It'll be it'll be sad to see him go, but obviously he'll be moving on to bigger and better things. But you know you don't take people like that for granted. That's for did, sure. Did you say the long snapper, or did you say the SID? Only time they notice when they have make a mistake. <laughs> I guess it'd be both. <laughs> <laughs> we're teasing. We're teasing both. It'll be the 410th game played in Bethel football history. Coach, let's go up to Grayson and get a big win. Sounds like a plan. Coach Chris Elliott here on the Chris Elliott Show. Join us each week as the coach, along with Zach O'Kelly and yours truly, as we review the previous week's games and preview the upcoming game. Good luck to the Cats, uh, 1230, up at Grayson, Kentucky, this coming Saturday. So long, everybody.